Hey y'all, welcome back to Squatch TV. On this episode, we are going to throw on some uh, Smithfield pork spare ribs. How's that sound? Sounds pretty good to me. We are going to use Bee's Rubs. I'm going to use a combination of their Big Time Barbecue and their Spiced Apple Rub, which is fantastic. I don't have a whole lot left. They're all pretty fantastic, really. Check them out, these rubs, yep. Uh, okay, so we're gonna cook these on my barrel house cooker, which is a hang, and, uh, a hang cook. So we use these hooks in conjunction with each other and we'll hang that rack of spare ribs. I'm not gonna trim them down to St. Louis. Uh, we're just gonna open them up uh, give it a quick rinse off. If there's anything that needs to come off, I'll take it off. Otherwise, we're just going to season them uh, and put them on, hang them in that barrel house and let the, let the charcoal and the hickory wood do the work. So let's get, uh, oh, today's firearm of the day. Isn't, isn't she a beauty? Today's firearm of the day. The CZ-75 SP-01 Tactical. She is a beaut, Clark. And boy, does she shoot good. Yep, a little heavy to carry. So not really my summer choice of carrying with shorts. Uh, but a beautiful firearm nonetheless. So there you go. Today's firearm of the day. Okay, let's, uh, I'll get you switched around here and we'll get these rinsed off and show you what's up. Okay, let's get started on these guys, huh? We'll get them out of their, uh, get them out of the package here. I haven't had a good spare rib and, jeez, I don't know how long, quite a while. All right, that opens that up pretty good. Dump them in the sink. And then like I said, we'll just give them a quick rinse off. And if there's anything on there that we really, that I can't live with, I'll trim it off and I'll show you if there is. There's a good rinse. Now I'll set them on a little paper towel here so we can kind of dry them off a little bit. All right. Doesn't get much easier than that. Okay. Easy enough. Now if we just had a little better cameraman, that'd be me. I mean, there's a little bit of fat there that I could, yeah, I guess I could trim a little bit off. Not much though, a little bit there, a little bit there. Pretty easy. Hope everybody's having a good Thursday. Preparation for Friday. I mean, you don't have to trim all this off. I don't know why I'm doing it, because somebody put a knife in my hand. That's why I'm doing it. Uh, you might look. Got a little bit of silver skin left on there. I don't normally take much off of spare ribs. But since I'm here... See if we can't get some of that off of there. Yeah, there just isn't much on there, you know. A little bit. But not too bad. And these things, I don't know if any of you have a barrel cooker. 
but I have a barrel house and just love it. Especially the portability of it. It's what I bring uh, hunting to hunt and camp because it's portable and it's easy to store and the whole nine yards. I bought travel bags with them and it just, just works out real nice. Real nice. There's just a little chunk here I want to get off. There we go. Okay. Huh. What do you think? Are they ready for a little a little rub down? I think they are. So I'll get you over to where I don't have to. Isn't it funny that four inches bending over here instead of over here on the cutting board? It ruins me, so hold tight. Okay, that's a much better, that extra four inches, I'm telling you, makes all the difference in the world. All right, so we'll hit it with a little yellow mustard. This is just for a binder for our rubs. So if you're new to barbecuing and you're looking at this video going, what the hell is he doing with the yellow mustard? Trust me, it's okay. This is how, you can use olive oil, any oil. You can use uh, hot sauce, barbecue sauce, but it won't change the flavor. You're not gonna taste yellow mustard, I promise. So it's cheap and it works good as a binder. So I'm gonna open these guys up so I can try to keep a glove clean here. Open that guy up. I'm going to hit it first with the uh, Bees Rubs Spiced Apple, and then I'll top it off with the Big Time Barbecue Rub. So, you rub that mustard around, and it's just like I said, and you want to get those edges. Oop, I just felt, yeah, that's, see, norm. okay, hold on, let me stick with one thing here. Normally, I, I'd cut these down to St. Louis ribs, because you usually get this sharp piece of bone here. But I'm not going to do it today. I really wanted to just run uh, run spares. Okay, so there you go. Move the rub around. We'll hit the spiced apple rub first. Kind of give you an idea of how much we're putting on there. Don't forget your edges, right? I find it easiest to do edges away from me, so I'll flip that around. Okay, now we'll hit it another coat. I'll give it a little pat here, get that apple rub in there, and then we'll hit it with this big time barbecue. That spiced apple is a great flavor. And so is this big time barbecue, but really the big time barbecue is going to give us some wonderful color. As will the hickory wood and the charcoal. That'll help give it nice color too. There, isn't that pretty? All right, we'll flip this guy over. We'll do the same thing on this side. A little mustard. That'll give it a good enough binder. We'll hit it with that spiced apple again first. Okay. Go over the top of that with the big time barbecue. And then what I'll probably do, hold on a second. And there's no rules that say you can't add more rub in the middle of your cook, right? No rules whatsoever. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll just pat it nice, gentle. I'll probably spray these ribs a couple of times in my big orange sprayer. Uh, uh, probably, I don't know, apple cider vinegar, 
maybe a little peach moonshine, something like that, right? Once I figure it out, I'll let you know. Uh, okay, so we're thicker down here on this end. So I'm gonna hang this down. So I'm gonna start up here. And this is the side of the hook that hooks on to what's called the H grate at the top of the barrel house cooker. So that's gonna end up being on the top. But what we want, since we're gonna get these so tender, we wanna do what they call daisy chain, these two hooks together, so they're more stable. You follow me? Am I making any sense whatsoever? So basically, it'll be like this in the ribs, right? So if you measure it out, should be right about there, right? So we'll go in there, just like that, right? It's through the other side, just like that. And then this guy, we're gonna come up through that hook, right? And you kind of get a feel for where you're at. So then we're gonna go in there and boom. Oh, hold on, I'm coming. Boom, we're daisy chained, right? Looks good. Let's uh, bring you out to the smoker. I won't even hit pause, how's that? We'll just drag your butts out here, like it or not. Let the dog out at the same time. Okay. See if I got a place to put you here without losing everything. Oh, that might hold up. Maybe. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so I got a... I got a uh, chimney full of charcoal ready to go. We're gonna throw that right in there, into the barrel house. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I got a hunk of hickory, right? We're gonna throw that guy right on top. And then we'll open up the barrel house and I'll let those sink down on an edge there and hook them on. Right, just that easy. Take them dirty gloves off. Bring it on over, set it on, lock her down. And then you got your vents over here, so and they run off elevation and I'm pretty much zero elevation, but I run it at about one and that works out pretty good. Works out to be about uh, 250 to 275. So hold on. All right, so there's my vents down there. So I set it up to about one. Got it belted down. Got the charcoal and the wood in there. I don't even pay attention to that temperature thermometer anymore just because I'm used to using it. I'm pretty proficient at it. Look at all that smoke. And them ribs are just hanging down in there. So that's it. We'll just let that keep on going today and I'll bring you back uh, when I feel necessary. All right. All right, y'all. So the ribs have been on for about an hour. They're smoking away good. They're already getting some color. So they're looking pretty good. I uh, just thought I'd show you. I'm going to put together a little uh, spritz because I do plan on uh, spritzing them. So I thought I'd just throw something together. Uh... I usually do like an apple juice concentrate. I buy them cans, put them in the freezer, and I got a couple out there, but eh, I just decided to mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna use a cherry Coca-Cola. All right, I'll throw that guy in there. A lot of people use Dr. Pepper. I've used different flavors of moonshine before. Uh, I've used the those, uh, Oh, the peach juice, that's a really good one. So a can of, uh, can of whatever pop you want. I'm using uh, Cherry Coke. And then a half a can of apple cider vinegar. And a half a can, or actually a can. I'll do a can, almost a can. Three quarters of a can of water. 
and that will be plenty to get our big orange sprayer, our compression sprayer, up and running. I don't know if you can see where that level is, is about right here, so that's good enough to get us running with this guy. If you don't have a big orange sprayer, get on Amazon and get yourself one. They're pretty darn nice. You just pump it up like that, and then just press the button down, and it just continuously sprays. Compression sprayers are real nice. And you get to decorate it with your cool stickers, right? Gotta love that. All right, so we'll bring you back here another hour when I start spraying them. Okay, y'all, we're at the two-hour mark, about two hours and five minutes. So I thought we'd uh, I'd show you I'm pulling them out, and we'll give them a spray down, and we'll see how they look. They're looking pretty good. See how nice those look? Get a little closer. Yep, looking good. Looking like they should at about the two hour mark. The bones are just starting to peek through. The meat's just starting to, just starting to uh, pull back from the bones. So that orange sprayer, give it about 15 pumps. I need me a cameraman. That'll get you pretty close. Right, and then all you do is press that. Right, and get them turned around. Get the other side. There you go. Nice and sprayed down. Throw them back in. in another hour and they should be pretty close to done i'll keep an eye on them from here all right all right y'all we are at the four hour mark i have spritzed them two or three times and we are getting super close <clears throat> take a little longer because i keep opening it up to do video but you see how them bones are starting to show up that meat shrinking away from the bone that is a telltale sign that these babies are just about there. Man, they look good, don't they? Great color. Yep, so we're just gonna keep them. I just lost 15 minutes pulling them out, but that's okay. We are gonna keep them going and we'll throw some sauce on them here shortly. All right, y'all, let's uh, get these things sauced up, shall we? We'll pull them, sauce them, and then put them back on, and the sauce will set, and then we'll be in heaven. If I can find the... <laughs> there it is. There's that little hook. See how good the... Meat's pulling back from the bones. That's just perfect. It's got great color. Yeah. I could even show you the color in the sunshine, but uh, it just isn't going to work very good, I guess. Okay. Let's sauce these guys up. They are definitely getting loose. Uh, in case you were wondering, Hutch is hot. Of course. So I'm just going to pour a bit on here. I'm not going to go crazy, right? Because we can always add sauce at the end as well. There's no sense in wasting sauce that's going to drip off, right? We want it to set on there. That's what makes them delicious. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'll flip them and do the same thing on the meat side. Oh man, what great color. Beautiful. 
beautiful. All right, so we'll throw some sauce down here. I think it's about time I busted another jar of this out of the pantry. All right, well, let's just spread that out a little bit. Yeah, that is gonna be delicious. I'm so glad I conned myself into making these today. All right, there you go, y'all. Yeah? <laughs> There's that cameraman again. Don't they look great? Okay, I'll let the sauce set up. I'll take a shower, and then we'll be back for the cut. All right, y'all. What I forgot to tell you is when I pulled them, uh, I put a little bit more sauce on them and then wrapped them in foil, and so they've rested for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, that's always important to rest all your meat, so. Uh, how do you like my shirt? Another shout out to Mrs. McGlynn for making me my awesome shirt. I love this thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's get down to it. We're getting pretty hungry around here. I'm out of hutches. Now what am I going to do? Well, I don't know. By the magic of squatch delicious there's another one all right so i might also probably sprinkle a little bit more rub on them once we open them up but let's open them up see how we're looking how's that sound this video is damn long enough i gotta figure out a way to make shorter videos i think that's my problem with why people aren't watching as much or maybe i'm an asshole i don't know could be uh wouldn't be the first time i've been told that so Okay, we'll get those guys in there. Absolutely no reason to remove any of that juice. So we'll just pour that right back on there. Get rid of the trash. Okay. <laughs> that does look pretty good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Rinse my basting brush off. Rest that sauce back on there where it belongs. Oh man, don't those look fantastic. Okay, so I'll add just a little more of the, just go light if you're gonna do this. You don't wanna go crazy the very end just go light just so you get a a touch more of that flavor right and they all complement each other the spice apple rub complements the big time barbecue rub which complements the hutch's barbecue sauce which complements the pork ribs you know it's all a happy trifecta of flavor all right, that looks pretty good. Wouldn't you say? I know the lighting's hard in here right now because of the time of day and all my windows. Such is life. Okay, uh, I'm turning them over to cut because I'm a cheetah. That's why, I'm a cheetah, I'm a cheetah. Boy, these ribs are going everywhere. I think I might just have to try to get one right here in the middle. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll just cut one rib off here so you can see how we're looking. What do you think? They look pretty fantastic? Yes, I agree. I think they look pretty fantastic too. So, since y'all like watching me eat so much, oh, look at that sunshine. That'll give that rib some a little look. See how pretty that is? You could almost frame it. All right, looks pretty good. All right, now or never. <laughs> I come off the bone way too easy. <laughs> Trust me. If it comes off the bone that easy, 
with my missing teeth and fake teeth and everything else and loose teeth. <laughs> yep. Pretty good stuff, y'all. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for, uh, yeah. Hope you learned something out of it or didn't or enjoyed the, the video, whatever. It's all good stuff. Please uh, like it and share it if you wish. And we'll see you on the next, uh, the next video. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday evening. And as always, an even better tomorrow. Squatch out.